Hey there, and thanks for watching. So over the next few minutes, I'm gonna share a few features that have been added to my industrial development model, including a cash flow drop module, also known as an Argus drop module. So let's get started. So the last time I created a video related to this industrial development model, we were on version 2.1. And if you see the change log here, that was the last major update we had to the model. Since that time, we've uh, incorporated some bug fixes, added a few new features such as an AUM fee module. Uh, we added a, a residual land value tool, um, added a first gen tenant improvement and first gen leasing commission line item as a placeholder value. So a few miscellaneous features uh, created things like an uh, add delete OPEX line item. Several of you were asking to be able to add operating expense line items. We built a rent step module to allow rent growth at a frequency other than annual. So maybe you want rent to step every 10 years or every five years, you can now do that in the model. I'm not gonna show you those features as they're pretty self-explanatory as you go through the underwriting tab of the industrial development model. However, in version 2.8, a major update, we built this new cash flow drop module. In the industry, it's often called an Argus drop model be, or module because uh, many people will model their operating cash flows uh, or meaning uh, model to NOI plus leasing costs in a third party tool like Argus and then take those cash flows and drop them into Excel. So this is a feature that uh, people have been asking for for some time. I finally got around to doing it and why it took so long is it's a fairly big lift. Let me go into the model and I'll show you why. So if you want to activate this, or in other words, you want to model your lease cash flows, your operating cash flows in a tool such as Argus, you can come here to the underwriting tab. Let's imagine you've already done that, or maybe the broker has underwritten it in Argus and you're comfortable with the broker's assumptions, or you modify the broker's assumptions some uh, to accommodate your particular scenario. Or maybe you are the broker, you've modeled it in Argus, you want to understand what your client uh, what your client's partnership level returns will look like, or you want to layer in uh, uh, tranches of debt and you prefer to use Excel for that exercise. You come here to the underwriting tab. We scroll down to the operating cash flow module, or we click this operations, or again, we can just scroll down to operating period cash flows. And now there's this button right here, enable cash flow drop. And we, if we click that, what will happen? is this entire operating cash flow module will be shut off. And so all of our rental income uh, module calculations, our uh, expense calculations, all of that will be uh, turned off. Additionally, a good portion of our reversion cash flow module will be, will be turned off. Why? Because right now it's pulling in rental income, vacancy, uh, various operating expense line items, and all of those now will be done in your third party uh, uh, modeling solution. So you'll come again, you'll click this enable cash flow drop. And what happens is you're left with first some instructions to model the unlevered operating cash flow in Argus or another similar external cash flow modeling tool. Ensure that the analysis start date in your uh, external run matches the analysis start date in this Excel model. Or put another way, make sure that your month zero and your month one are the same in both. And that's really important. So here our month one is end of July, or our month zero is end of July, 2024. Our month one ends August 31st, 2024. Another thing I'll note, and I don't say it in the instructions, but I think it's, it's obvious is you'll want to ensure that you model in that external solution, uh, operating cash flows that go beyond whatever your analysis period is here. And that's because you're gonna be pulling in NOI uh, for say your forward 12 months beyond your analysis period. And you're gonna to wanna to ensure that you have enough cash flows in, your, uh, in that operating cash flow to uh, accommodate that. Next, you're gonna export those cash flows. So if you're using Argus, for instance, you can export to a CSV file. If you're using a state master or one of the other third-party solutions that are out there, you're just going to want to make sure that you export to an Excel fire file or to a CSV and that you have monthly cash flows that include a net operating income line, a leasing cost line, and a CapEx line. 
And that's important because you'll, you'll take that export and those exported cash flows and you'll, you'll paste them in these blue cells here, starting with your month one cash flow. And so by default, the model has just some cash flows that have been pasted in. And that way, these are your placeholder values. So you'll override those with whatever cash flows you grab from your third party uh, modeling tool. You'll paste those into there. And what happens is those then flow to the model. Uh, this model's net operating income line flows to a leasing cost and a CapEx line, sums to some capital total of capital expenditures, sum of leasing costs and CapEx, and arrives at a cash flow from operation. Now, this is a development model with the permanent debt module turned off. However, if I turn on perm debt, you'll see now that we also have a cash flow after financing line. And that's because we incorporate permanent debt, our construction debt rolls or is paid off by that perm debt, and you have some debt service here in line 141. I'm going to turn that perm debt off. And then finally, we come into the reversion cash flow, and you'll see now that all we, we have is our net operating income, uh, our industrial leasing reserve, to whatever extent we might have a reserve, our CapEx reserve, to whatever extent we might have that. That won't actually affect your value, or the value here is calculated based on your cap rate and your NOI either at stabilized on a trended basis for sale. Now, the other thing you'll note or another change as a result of this is when we go to our annual cash flow report, likewise, it turns off those uh, income and ex operating expense line items. So you just see net operating income, capital expenditure, expenditures, cash flow from operation. Uh, now we can revert back to the standard model just by coming here, clicking the disable cash flow drop, and that will get us back to just our standard operating cash flow module. So that is version 2.8 of our industrial development model, includes this new cash flow drop feature as well as a, a variety of other ancillary features and bug fixes. Let us know if you, uh, you catch any errors. Uh, version 2.0 is a major update. A lot of hundreds of cells were changed. Uh, we added three new macros in order to accommodate this a new feature. And so there's likely bugs. Let us know when you find them. We'll, we'll update in future versions of the model. Otherwise, happy modeling.